Hey, welcome back to the Thriving Therapist Facebook Live Sessions. Um, I've been reading a lot of your comments uh, when you hop on to join the page, and a lot of you have been saying that you're really stuck at this idea of trying to ramp up your referrals. Um, and I've, had, I've seen a lot of comments on the page about um, how to do this and where to start doing this, and I thought I would give you just a couple quick tips this morning, and I really want to hear a little bit more from you on your success stories, um, when you hit a wall, uh, what's working, what's not working, let's share and collaborate because that's how we um, learn when we're um, sharing and talking to each other about what's working for us and, and what's not working for us so we don't have to waste time as we can learn from each other's mistakes too. So one thing that <clears throat> I wanted to highlight today is your website, your Psychology Today profile, and your referral network. Um, I think it's important that, and a lot of you shared your websites. Um, let's dive right into that first. So if you're creating some online real estate, if you're making a website for yourself, you wanna be sure that you've got um, the proper information on there. And I'm gonna do a separate uh, training on you know everything you should have on your website, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. I've seen some beautiful websites. I I want to emphasize that less is more on a website. So um, keeping your information to small sound bites. Um, don't forget you're answering the questions that your clients have. Um, they're the ones that are looking online. So if you're starting out by saying, here's all my background and my education and my training, they might just kind of skim forward and say, this isn't really answering my call. So a person who's feeling depressed or anxious or needing more coping skills or communication help or whatever it is that your expertise or niche is, you want to ask a question that your client might be asking um, on your website so that you're really saying to that person, um, I'm going to be able to meet your needs. Um, so think about what kinds of questions your clients um, will be asking and um, try to answer those directly on your website. Don't forget to also have a lot of what they call call to action buttons. So um, by that, it is important to um, keep a little button at the bottom of the page so that when people are scrolling all the way down and reading your homepage, they have a button at the bottom that they can push and it will take them to either an email link or a way to schedule their first appointment with you or maybe another page on your website like find out more or you know you might have a couple different buttons. I've seen people put like three different things at the bottom. If you blog on your website, it will keep your information fresh on a Google search. We've talked about that in a previous uh, Facebook Live, but that's important to mention again. Um, blogging also gives people a chance to hear your voice as an expert. Um, so you want to be able to establish yourself as an authority wherever you can. And on your website, blog um, is a really important place to do that. Um, another thing we want to think about when we talk about ramping up our referrals is who are these referrals? Are they doctors? Are they counselors from schools? Are they in a psychiatry office? Um, I had a psychiatry office call me this week and they said, um, we want to get more business cards from you. This is a local psychiatry office in my neighborhood. And um, their um, psychiatrists and their nurse practitioners and their PAs are not capable of doing a full therapy session with their clients. They're really structured to do 15 minute med checks. Um, hey, I'm so glad to see you guys on here. Yeah, give a little thumbs up or a heart or a wave or a comment. Drop a comment in if you do have um, a question for me. I can be on here for a few minutes. I've got an 8.30 patient this morning, but I can be on here for a few minutes if you do have specific questions. But I do think it's important that um, you connect with psychiatrist offices <clears throat> because they don't have the time to offer therapy. Typically, they're just doing 15-minute medication checks. Um, and so that is a great place for you to be connected. And when you do connect with the psychiatry office, you can send them a letter um, explaining where your office is located, what your expertise is, um, that you are accepting new referrals. I would put that in bold right at the top, accepting new referrals, because those psychiatry offices are typically drowning with referrals and they don't have the time to handle all the um, referrals that are coming their way. So it would be a great idea to throw your hat in the ring. Um, you can bring um, food and business cards and rat cards. Um, I showed these rat cards at a previous um, session, uh, Facebook Live. Let me try and grab one real quick. 
Oh, this is Kelly's rack card. Kelly, um, I'm sorry, Kylie Caps. I was going to grab Kelly's. Um, Kylie Caps um, is an amazing therapist who just opened her new practice. I got to go this way. Um, and she made these beautiful um, rack cards. And so this would be a great thing to drop off at the psychiatrist's office with some lunch or some food or a little tray of cookies or something that they can say, oh, who is this from? And you stick your cards all over the top of the cookie tray and they put it in their uh, conference room. And when the people go in to get a cookie, they grab your you know card and they're like oh wow who's this so I'm telling you food is an attractor it brings people to the table so it's definitely worth bringing um, something with you when you stop by these offices so nourish your referrals um, Jessica's on here saying I've hesitated reaching out to psychiatrists and physicians because I don't want to harass them you're not harassing them you are providing them with relief so they're happy to have your information because um, they can't handle the amount of referrals. For psychiatrist offices, they can't handle the amount of referrals they're getting, and they don't offer comprehensive 50-minute therapy sessions to their um, people because they're just doing medication management typically. Um, if you're you know, harassing them, they'll throw your cards in the trash, and they won't give you any referral, but it's worth asking. It's worth giving them um, your expertise and information. Um, also with physicians, don't forget, sometimes if they're new, you want to also look really carefully to see how long has this uh, doctor's office been open. If they're brand new to your neighborhood, they're also looking for referrals. And so then you can use the old trick of mutual referrals. So you want to be able to say, like, when I started out, I uh, was trying to target OBGYNs. I sent like 200 letters um, to all these OBGYNs in my area, my county, and only one doctor wrote me back. I think you guys remember me telling this story. One doctor. And he said, um, come on in. I want to meet you and we'll talk, you know, and, and I would, I think when I think back now, he was trying to see if I could send him new referrals because he was brand new to the neighborhood too. So um, it was a really good lesson for me in learning how to angle my pitch um, like a mutual referral invitation. So what I did from there on out was whenever I reached out by email or phone or when I went in person and tried to drop cards off or introduce myself and really beat the bushes for referrals, I did it hard in the first like six months of my practice and it paid off because if you get five or ten really good referral sources, they'll refer to you all the time. Um, and when you do that, you're going to then grow because those people who see you are going to tell 10 more people and 10 more people and 10 more people. And before you know it, you'll be like me and you're like, I can't take any more referrals. <laughs> it's just too much. Um, so definitely reach out and act like you're giving them and not act like, but also offer that you're um, providing, um, you know, mutual referrals to those offices as well. Because I did actually, in all honesty, I had a couple new um, female clients who were looking for an OBGYN in the neighborhood. And I really liked my meeting with this new doctor. Um, he had a openings in his practice. He was able to get people in quite quickly. And so I would give his name out to, to my new clients who were looking for um, someone else um, to work with. Uh, maybe they were transitioning to my community or they were new. They were, you know, <clears throat> looking for a new doctor, but, or they didn't, they complained that they didn't like their current doctor. I could say, hey, have you tried this one? He's new to the neighborhood and I really like his approach. Um, and then once I had met him, I had some information to give them. So, um, yes, nourish your referrals. Yes, um, Rebecca, for sure. You've got to do that because. Um, and throughout the year, not just one time, but you know, you send them a little letter and I talked about this before too, when you have an intake form and it says, may we thank your referral on there and they can say yes or no when they're filling out the form, they can list who they were referred by and whether or not you can thank them. And if they say yes, write that referral source a handwritten note because if it's in your own handwriting a busy busy office is more likely to open what looks like a card than they are to open what looks like a bill right so if you type it out and it's on some you know business envelope and it's all typed out people think oh that looks so professional most of the time when i get things like that i barely skim them i just think should i even open this sometimes i rip them in half so um and throw them out i know that that was like a shock face there. So don't, don't be shocked. But you know how it is when you have mail at your own house, you throw out stuff that doesn't look like it's for you. You know, it just looks like it's kind of a mass mailing or a spam mailing. Um, so if it's a handwritten letter, 
um, and it looks like it's the size of a card and you stick more business cards inside that little thank you card. I have little thank you cards I always keep in my desk drawer. Just, I'm talking about this, like these little tiny cards, you know, and you stick your cards in here and you write a little thank you note. When it's in your handwriting, they'll open it and they'll read it. And that is another way of getting your referral sources to be able to continue to refer to you. And you don't have to say a lot. You don't even have to tell them the patient's name, which I, I don't think you should unless you want to do a follow up and say, you know, and you get a release that's signed from your patient and you want to follow up because there's maybe a need to talk about medication, um, you know, options or things like that with a psychiatrist or physician. But um, no, I usually don't put the person's name in the thank you. I just say thank you so much for your recent referral or referrals. Um, you know, I really appreciate working with your population and um, I look forward to, you know, continuing to support um, your patients in this way. So that's all you have to say and a little handwritten note goes a long way. Um, the other thing I wanted to touch on here, I've got my notes that are taped all over my um, computer, is um, the website we talked about. You got a blog. You should have photos of yourself on there. People really want to see, you know, you. They want to see. Does this person look like someone that I feel like I I could connect with? Um, so that's going to also ramp up your referrals by self referral. So people are looking online at home. They're trying to figure out who they can see, you know, um, who they can call for therapy. If your website is easy for them to navigate and it feels like it answers their questions um, and their call and they can see a picture of you, they can read a blog or they can read a little bit of your philosophy and it's very simple for them to click and make an appointment or have an inquiry to have an appointment made for them, um, then I think it's going to be um, a lot quicker for you to turn around those referrals. So you want to make sure that your website is loaded with call to action buttons, even if it takes them to another page on your site or more info or about me or a blog or whatever it might be it's gonna give them a chance to stay on your page a little longer and go a little deeper with who you are and why you might be the right expert for them. The other thing that I learned, I went to the Harvard um, conference, Let's look at how much I love this mug, it's like I'm, I'm like drinking right over the label there, it's like I'm watching it so much, I love that mug, it makes me feel so smart. Um, when I went to the Harvard Writing and Publishing Conference uh, for Healthcare Professionals, which was phenomenal, this was a couple years ago, they talked a lot about establishing yourself as an expert. And you can do that online um, with your online real estate. You know, Google your name. What comes up when you Google, Google your name? You should be able to see very quickly um, are you the kind of expert that people would say right away, wow, that's the kind of person that I think I need to work with. When you Google me, you'll see kind of right away, oh, she looks like she does self-care, mindfulness, like retreats. Um, she was a music therapist, so there's some music stuff floating around there deep in the Google searches. But you'll see my blogs, you'll see articles, and I'm going to talk in another um, upcoming Facebook Live. I've got a list of things I want to cover in Facebook Lives. And one of the things I really want to review with you guys is um, HARO queries, um, and that's a whole nother topic. Um, how to answer um, a call for quotes in articles and magazine articles online or in print, um, and all different ways to sort of start establishing yourself as an expert by reaching larger audiences than just yourself, okay? So we'll, we'll be talking about that too. Um, but it's important, I think, that we do that. So let's see if we have other questions here. I see some people waving. It's so good to see you guys. You know, our page has been exploding. This weekend we had more than 200 new members in our group. I don't know what's happening, but I'm so thrilled that you're all here because I know that I wish so bad that when I started out as a new therapist that I would have had this kind of support too. So I'm so happy that we have this community because it means more people are going to be accessing services and more therapists are going to be thriving. Um, so yes, yeah, so ramp up your referrals, dust off your Psychology Today profile. It is absolutely worth the $30 investment. Some people were like, gee, that feels like kind of a lot as a monthly price. Don't forget, it's tax deductible. 
So you can talk to your accountant about making um, deductions that are business related and advertising is part of that budget. So definitely don't forget that that $30 is a tax deduction for you. You get the magazine for your waiting room and your lobby and um, every month you get the paper magazine and you get um, a lot of referrals online. I'm not kidding. Every month they send us an email update on how many people are searching for therapists in our community every month. The last time I looked, I think it was like 61000 thousand people were searching for a therapist in my tiny zip code you know so there's a lot of people out there looking for help especially in the winter um, so I do feel like psychology today is an awesome search engine it brings all your information right in front of your um, prospective clients and uh, reach out to the local psychiatry offices reach out to your local doctor offices with specialties that are in your niche look for new providers um, Google around and look for new offices that are opening. Watch when you're driving around and look for offices that are opening, grand openings. Look at your local chamber information because they always do ribbon cuttings. So try to find, you're kind of hunting for new offices. You're hunting for new physicians or new practices or a new doctor who's joining a practice. You can Google things like that. Um, speaking of Googling, a lot of people were also asking me about um, how do I ramp up my speaking engagements? You can Google call for proposals. When you Google call for proposals, I put call for proposals women's conferences 2020. And all of these call for proposals will pop up and you can submit your proposal. I'm going to do a separate thing on that too because that's kind of a whole nother beast. But a lot of people on this page already have a private practice and they want to scale and grow their income by doing retreats or speaking engagements. And that is definitely something that um, I'll cover in an upcoming Facebook Live. So any other questions? Hi, Jane. Um, thank you so much. Oh my gosh, Jane and I used to work together at University of Michigan. Go blue. And I miss your smiling face, Jane, and your wonderful presence. Um, you taught me a lot about just great, great um, therapy services that you provided to patients there at University of Michigan Hospital. So it was a wonderful time working with you. Anyone else have any questions? Um, I'm so excited to support this amazing group and I know that together we are stronger and we are all gonna thrive in 2020. So I will be back on here pretty soon in another couple days, maybe even tomorrow uh, with a, another Facebook Live. But for now, I'm signing off and get out there and ramp up your referrals. <laughs>